Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and in this video, we are going to meet Agent365. This is your new AI partner to help you in a smart way to govern, monitor, and control all your agents in Microsoft 365. We're gonna firsthand take a look at the Agent 365, look at its overview, all the tools that come along with it, and some important settings that you need to be aware of. So stick around, this is a game changer, and therefore everybody needs to watch this video, including makers, administrators, and the decision makers. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And before we dive into the technical part, can I geek out for just a second and say how much I love this name of Agent 365? Because when I first heard about it, my mind directly went to the James Bond series where you have names over there as Agent 007, Agent 006. So whoever on the Microsoft side came up with this name, major kudos to you all because it works. All right, all right, let's ha stop having fun and go straight into the technical side. Now, before we deep dive into Agent 365, I wanna spend a little bit of time telling you what the current situation, or at least the previous situation was. So this is a clip from the video I released just 11 days ago, and it shows you how everything was in the Copilot side before even the Agent 365 came out. So here we are in Mac, which is Microsoft Admin Center, and all we had was Copilot. And you see there were all these options, overview, Agents was in Copilot, and then under settings, you had all of these settings. So everything was inside Copilot, but now it has detached into two separate entities. Make sense? Good. So now today, when we come into the Mac, you see Copilot, but right below it, you see Agents. The two have actually detached, and this is what we're gonna deep dive into. So I'm gonna expand both of them so we can actually see the side by side. And the first thing you notice is that in the Copilot subset, Agents is no longer there. Why? Because it is its full set of category by itself. Like you have the Agents, but in it, you've got all of these other settings. This was my big catch right off the bat. Now, let's spend some time on the agent set, all right? So when I come over here, this is what I see on the overview. Now, I know, I know what some of you are thinking. Like, Daniel, what level of access, what role do I need to come over here and see it? And as of right now, there's three of them. The first one obviously is global admin. Second one, if you just wanna view it, it's global reader. But the third option to also do administrative stuff is the AI administrative role. So either one of these three will work, but if you actually want to do some setting changes, you need to be at least a global admin or an AI admin. I'm sure some of you were thinking about that, so I called it out. Okay, first thing is the overview, and this is like a really good dashboard to see all the information that you want. Important term that you should start getting familiar with is agent registry. And I wanna spend a little bit time on this concept because I did start to notice some trends in the past and now it's making sense what's happening over here. And here's what it is. It all started on the Microsoft Entra side, but the enterprise applications. And initially in the Power Apps days, when I would come over here and I would just do a search for Power Apps, the one that I actually noticed was this one over here, Power Apps there was one Power Apps application registered in Microsoft Entra. Now, I know you must have hundreds of thousands of Canvas apps, model apps, and everything, but on the Entra side, there was only one that was registered. Sure, there are other ones that you registered for some kind of authentication, whatever, but the actual Power Apps app, there was only one registered. However, when it started coming with all of these agents that we were building, there was a plethora of one of them, like right over here. If I just come in again, when I specifically go out and I go into the app registrations, I click on all applications, you will see so many of Copilot Studio ones coming up over here. This is what caught my attention. Like why is it for agents, we are registering each and every agent over here in Entrasite. I knew that there was a reason for this and now it's all beginning to make sense. When we come over here into the Mac, over here on the agent side, we are able to see the agent registry. And if I click over here, explore all agents, you are able to see all of these that get registered both on the internal and the external side. So I wanna spend a little bit more time double clicking over here. 
Now, first off, this is not new because we were able to see this previously when Agents was under the Copilot side. So that's a good thing. We're already familiar with it. What we do notice is under Publisher, there are some options. There is the Microsoft external published by your organization and shared by creator. I'm going to go on the bottom one first, shared by creator, because this is the one that we are able to see built internally. And this is where you start to see not just one, not just two, but all the three types of agents. And let me give you an example. See Copilot Studio Lite. Then there is Copilot Studio Full. And if I just X out over here for a minute, you come down over here, it is also picking up my Azure Foundry one. This is what got me excited. For the first time, all three of those important agents are finally available in one centralized locations for us admins to actually monitor in one single shot. This to me is the big game changer. So we, we came straight away here to the registry side, but also let's take a look at the map. Um, I like the user interface over here. The user experience is pretty neat as well because it goes ahead and puts this into two different categories. There is the others and then there's the Microsoft Corporation. So just to make sure that we both understand what it is, let's just double click over here, all right? So I'm just gonna zoom in over here. I'm just scrolling on the wheel on the Microsoft Corporation piece and you can see these are the agents that Microsoft themselves have provided and released it in our tenant. And you can see similarities over here. See specifically the researcher, that's one on the side, uh, the surveys, like we are familiar with it, apps, workflows. And then there's also the new frontier ones, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, like this was the ones released during Ignite time. Like all of these are Microsoft created and therefore they fall into this Microsoft Corporation one. As of right now, as of today, there is 13 of them. Now on the other section, here is where you see a combination of them, all right? You go ahead and see the ones that the vendors have created, deployed into your agent. Also over here, these are the ones that we actually created on the Copilot Studio site. So other basically includes everything which is non-Microsoft related. However, it is also those that are created inside your organization. In short, it's not bad. It's just a quick snapshot of how many there are. Uh, my big takeaway over here is basically the numbers. I can quickly see that I can right now I have 140 agents, but here's the breakdown. 13 of them come specifically from the Microsoft side and the number of the remaining ones. That's basically my big takeaway from this map side. All right, when we go to the requests, again, this concept is not new. We already had this one before. When some person has gone ahead and made it an app and they've actually deployed it, say they wanna do it inside Teams as an app, they've uploaded it, gone ahead and published it. This is where the requests come in to go ahead and actually get it approved. We are familiar with this, so this is not new. The catalog is something that I think will take some time to mature, because right now I'm seeing that this top category is showing me things built by Microsoft, but right over here, it says looking for something else. If I click on see all agents, it immediately goes back into the registry site. And this happens again. If I go back into the catalog, and if I click over here on show more, it goes back into the registry site. So as of right now, I think this whole catalog section will mature over the period of time, but it is there over here. Let's take a look at the tools because over here, it introduces a whole new set of tools. And as you caught it, there are nine MCP, Model Context Protocol Server Options released. This also was brand new. And by the way, if you're not familiar with what these MCPs are and how they work, I did a whole introduction video on that. The link is down in the description below. I highly recommend you take a look at it because it really helps solidify what this MCP is. All right, so as we take a look at this list over here, you notice that all of these MCP servers are first of all, two things. They're part of the Frontier program. Frontier is just another name that Microsoft has released to help you be on the front cutting edge of all these new features, which haven't gone production yet, but you have early access to it to test play and give feedback. That's basically what this Frontier is. So for all of them, see from the top to the bottom, all of them have the Frontier in the brackets, which means you look, touch, play, test, just don't go production with it. And a couple of new ones that I found out, because I was already familiar with one such as the Microsoft Outlook. There's two iterations of it. I was familiar with that. But now there's two iterations of SharePoint. There's a SharePoint list, and then there is SharePoint and OneDrive. And then the new one over here is the Microsoft Word. I was actually surprised that Excel didn't come over here because Excel has so much data already in it. I was expecting that as well. Um, I think it will come out soon, but these are the nine that are already available. And over here for each of them, when you go ahead and select it, you come to the right and it just gives you an overview. 
Um, the overview has one important thing. It's giving you the URL of the servers from this agent side. So in case you wanna go ahead and directly tap into it from the API side, this is where you go and grab that URL. Um, I was hoping that there'd be a little bit more settings over here, but as of right now, this is on the Frontier one, and these are the nine that is available today. And last on the list is settings. And this is the ones that admins will really love because it finally has some features that we've been waiting for. So really, let's spend some time over here. The first one is allowed agent types. And this is where it gives you three options on how you want to make the sharing of the agents available. You can go and allow all of them that are built by Microsoft. Remember in the overview, we had basically that map that there was all these Microsoft ones, um, all the frontier ones also that Microsoft built these agents. That's the one that it's referring to over here. These ones are all the apps and agents built by our organization. So all of those Copilot Studio ones that we had seen, this is what will allow it to be shared. And then the finally one, apps and agents built by external publishers. Basically, the ones that are not built in your company, this is the one. So it gives you all of those three options. You can pick and choose how you want this to be deployed. I know what some of you are already thinking. You're pretty much gonna allow the first two and then go ahead and uncheck the bottom one. That way you can go and do some testing on your lower line tenants and then bring them up over here, things like that. I completely get it. But now you've got this flexibility. I wish there was a way to go ahead and actually drill down to going ahead and putting security groups or something over here uh, because you do wanna give early access to some people. Maybe that is coming in the future. We will have to wait and see, but hey, at least we have these options. So what, what I wanna do next is take a look at the second and the last one. The second is the sharing and user access together. Because as you can see, sharing over here is specifically for manage who can share agents within the organizations. It has three options available over here. But if I go to the user access, it says manage which users or groups can use agents. And it has three options over here as well. So the best way to understand what the two settings actually mean is also to take a look at them side by side. So I'm clicking the user access over here and I've taken a screenshot of the sharing. So let's take a look at them together. Sharing, as the name suggests, is how we can manage who can share agents within the organization. So this is after the fact when users have already built the agents and now they wanna share it. So on the sharing side, there are three options. So the first option is allow all users to share with anyone in the organization. Second one is no users can share with anyone in the organization, but can choose who they share agents with. Now you cannot manage this one using this groups over here. And just to be sure, let's confirm that. Um, I'll go and X out on this side. I'll go to the sharing. Um, I'll go and select this option. And over here, there is no security group, which means once this is turned on, users cannot, because once this is turned on, users who are sharing their agents will be able to use the groups that are available will be able to use the sharing options. They just can't share it with everyone. Thought I'll show you that. All right, let me go back over here, go back to that user access and actually show back the other one and go back to the other one. Um, the third option is very similar for both of them. It says allow a specific group of users to share with anyone in the organization. Same thing on the right, allow specific groups of users to share with anyone in the organization. This is again for as far as the sharing and the user access. Keep in mind, they sound similar, but they are two separate things. All right, so let's jump to the last one, which actually is this templates over here. And as you can see, there's two different types of templates. The first one is all about allowing the instances. So on the right, it's actually telling you that in my tenant, uh, I have 25 of the Microsoft 365 Frontier licenses. That's the one that's allocated from my tenant, which means I can go and assign other users to participate in this Frontier program in my tenant. And on the right is the policies, because in all of this to take effect, you need to have these policies available on the purview side, on the entra side, and even on the SharePoint side. So it gives you a quick snapshot of what these policies are. And in case you haven't turned on this Frontier program in your company, but now you're excited and you wanna do it, let me show you how to do that. Let me just X out over here. And to do that setting, you actually have to come into the copilot. It's not in the agents, it's in the copilot. Uh, over here, you go into settings, and then right at the bottom, under the user access, right at the bottom, there is the Copilot Frontier. Click on it, and this is where you do that. Under the web app section, right over here, it says allow users to access Frontier features in the web apps. You basically go ahead and do that using the specific users, and here you add the users. There's the similar things for the desktop apps and for the agents. This is how you turn on that Frontier features if you are interested in participating in this program. So keep in mind that in this video, I have just scratched the surface. 
the section where I showed you all the agents, you can actually click into the agent level and do some monitoring and governance work at that as well. I'll leave that for a whole separate video, plus there'll be more improvements on it. So hopefully this video was helpful to you and gives you a little peace of mind because I know this whole agentic world is moving at lightning fast speed, but it's stuff like this that actually give you peace of mind because now for the first time you have one central location to monitor these agents and start applying some governance and control around it. Hopefully this video was useful to you and as always, keep building Microsoft agents. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.